So I have been debating whether or not I've wanted to post this video for quite some time. <laughs> this video, I think, has been finished and just sitting in a folder for like four and a half weeks, um, which is a bit embarrassing. Uh, but it's a little hard to look at. Um, turns out that if you are trying to make time lapse, you should probably not rotate the canvas so much. Who knew? Certainly not I. I'm just not that smart. <laughs> Probably should have realized, but you live and you learn, and, and that's what this channel is for, um, learning. I really wanted to share my art and to learn a little bit more about art, and I figured it'd be fun to share it on YouTube because YouTube is what encouraged me to get back into art, um, which seems silly, but I started watching people make art on YouTube a few years ago, and I was just super inspired and encouraged to to start art again, which I haven't... Well, okay, so I've been doing, for the last couple of years, I've been doing art again, um, because that's when I, you know, started watching people on YouTube. But for the longest time, from like 2013 to like 2019, I, I didn't do any art. Um, I loved it still, and I liked the idea of it, but I had a really bad patch. <laughs> and I was hoping, I guess, that YouTube would kind of encourage me to keep going. Not only to share my art, but to keep making it. Um, which is another thing I have problems with. I, I, I have a massive amount of anxiety sometimes when it comes to doing uh, basically anything. <laughs> including talking, um, and sharing stuff that I enjoy, even if it doesn't really matter. I don't know. It's weird. I've gotten a little bit better. Um, I've been sharing more art, especially on my Instagram and here. For some reason, making the videos helps, and I don't really know why. I think maybe it's it kind of makes an obligation of it. Um, granted, I haven't been doing everything I've been wanting to do with videos, because I do want to speak in them, and that's the next hurdle, is kind of starting to, to talk a little bit. Um, which I think that was another really, really big reason why I was having trouble posting this video, was because I wanted to talk about it. Um, and I also didn't want to talk. <laughs> uh, so I'm ripping off the band-aid, I'm just gonna do it. Um, you know. And what better video to, to start talking on than one that's a little hard to look at? <laughs> um, yeah, so I wanted to share it. Like, I, I want to share my art, and, and I'm particularly proud of this piece. Um, weirdly enough, it didn't start out as something that I, I thought I was going to finish necessarily, or even something that I thought was going to look nice. Granted, I think that the final result is a little uncanny, um, like it's like borderline uncanny valley. <laughs> I don't, I don't know exactly what I was going for, um, style-wise, but I kind of like it. It's kind of got that like it's it's almost it looks a little fake, and I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I'm I'm really proud of this piece. I, I really am. I had so much fun making it, even if it took me a stupid amount of time to make. I think this piece took me in total about 14 hours, and. I started really wanting to play around with brushes and trying to create texture because I had watched a YouTube video, which obviously, <laughs> talking about like testing out brushes and different programs and getting familiar with them, and it, it kind of clicked with me that maybe I could use brushes to create a little bit of texture and, and to bring some more life into my digital pieces because that's something I really struggle with is digital pieces looking a little flat, I guess. And honestly, it's kind of like I'm embarrassed about everything because <laughs> it probably shouldn't have taken me so long to realize that, yeah, I could do more with brushes and with digital art to give it a little bit more life. Sometimes I don't visualize stuff too well, so I need a little bit of, um, somebody to show me, I guess. <laughs> and I saw, you know, I saw that video and I was like, okay, let's go play. And so I started doing this 
and I started, um, I decided I wanted to do mostly just color blocking. I didn't really sketch this piece out too, too much, um, just kind of slapped the colors down and using the magic of digital uh, art, moving stuff around, <laughs> which you cannot do on a normal canvas. <laughs> quite nice, quite a handy little tool that is. Um, but I figured color blocking and really just slapping the colors down as fast as I could would encourage me to move on with the piece um, instead of getting stuck in a sketch, which is something that I also really struggle with. Um, and this piece is inspired like uh, by that had a drink screenshot, which doesn't get any bigger. Um, that's as large as it gets. If it gets any bigger, it will get all pixely and just impossible to look at. Um, and I think that actually helped, to be perfectly honest. I couldn't make the picture any bigger, and I couldn't really make out a whole bunch of details. Um, so I was forced, almost, to take a step back and look at the bigger picture and really um, look at things from a, a different kind of perspective. Uh, often I get sucked into the details and I get stuck, um, which the oranges actually almost got me. Because I was trying to figure out how to make them look like oranges, you know, to get that, I guess, uh, white stuff. Um, what is it called? Pith, I think is what it's called. I could be wrong. Um, and I was stuck on it because I, I couldn't figure out what to do. And I decided to, like, mess around with some brushes. And I found one, I think it's called Crackles. It's more of a stamp than a brush. Um, and I started using it for the oranges. And I think it looks really interesting, like, it, I, I think it works, um, and, and it made me realize that instead of really trying to make a perfect recreation, sometimes you can just suggest what it is you're looking at. Um, you know, using those that, that stamp to give the orange that pith. Um, instead of really trying to painstakingly make it perfect, um, which would have driven me up the wall, especially seeing as that wasn't what I was going for. I really was trying to go for something a little bit more um, painterly, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't going for realism necessarily, just trying to play with brushes. Um, and, and doing that with the oranges really helped me kind of rethink the way that I go about things. And that is, you know, try suggesting more than perfectly recreating, which I really took with, um, actually this is perfect, uh, the background. Uh, <laughs> the background um, was another part where I really st almost froze because I, I couldn't quite figure out what to do. Um, and instead I just started painting at some point, which I'm kind of ashamed. I think that the, uh, some of the footage for this last, this part, here um, got lost, which is a little unfortunate, but I think most of it came through, so that's quite nice. Um, and I did, I really kind of was messing around with the brushes and finding different ways to get something that looked a little bit like wood without being super stingy about it, and I think it worked really well. Um, I'm actually really pleased with how the background came out, because I really didn't know what I was doing at first. Um, at some point I think it hit my stride though, and I kind of I, I kind of had it down. Um, I'm really pleased with the actual end result of all of this. Um, I think, you know, the oranges look like oranges, <laughs> kind of. They're uncanny, like, they're a little weird, they look a little bit off, but I think it's kind of fun. Um, but I think I have managed to do some of what I was trying to do, which is create texture and create something that looks a little bit more artistic and a little bit less flat, which is my biggest problem with digital art. Um, like I said, really struggle with pieces looking flat. But I took a lot of what I learned from this piece and used it in um, actually the last piece that I posted on uh, my Instagram, which was my stupid D&D &D gnome wizard. <laughs> it was actually um, painted after this um, because, like I said, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with this video. Um, so I just stopped recording stuff. Um, but I was still kind of making art, <laughs> thankfully. Um, but I took a lot of what I learned from this, and I, I kind of took it into that, where I was like, okay, we can kind of make some more artistic choices, hopefully. 
and I think it worked. Um, I'm really proud of that piece too. Um, I still have quite a lot to learn, obviously, but I think I've kind of found some interesting things to take away from this, and that is to use brushes to create texture, obviously, and to, to more just suggest things rather than get really stuck up on the details. Um, and like I said, I am still super proud of this piece. Um, I think like it's, it's, it's uncanny, sure, but it is kind of neat looking, and I kind of like that. I don't know what style I was going for necessarily, but it works, I think. Um, it was super fun to make, and I'm super proud of it. I think it's the first time, or one of the few times, that I've felt that a piece is actually finished, um, which I don't feel all the time. I think the last time was my Kirby painting, actually. Uh, I am kind of happy that it's happening a little bit more often, <laughs> so here's hoping that it continues, you know, happening. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, like, subscribe, or don't, I don't know, I'm not in charge of you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, bye bye.